So my dad always says that whenever you're learning a new subject, always look at its history. So I thought, let's go and check the history for Olama. So if you ask about the founders, the founders for Olama are Jeffrey Morgan, the guy here, and Michael Chiang, this guy. And they both are the co-founders of Olama. Now, if you actually look at their LinkedIn profiles, because I was going through it, their roots actually go back to a company called Kitematic, which gave the fastest and easiest way to run Docker on Mac. And you know, this company called Kitematic was later on acquired by Docker itself. And that's the beauty of Olama. When you start working on Olama, you'll see a lot of similarities to Docker. That's what I, I saw. That's why I got very inquisitive. And I wanted to see uh, that what's the history behind Olama or the founders of Olama. Now, uh, talking about the founding and launch, it was launched in 2023. Now, we are recording this in the year 2024, and it was just launched in 2023. And for a startup, uh, to uh, become so popular, it's definitely quite amazing. And as I said, the focus is on creating accessible and efficient AI-powered tools, particularly in natural language processing. So basically what the LLMs provide us. And quite important, the focus is on local models. Now, again, comparing to ChatGPT, here with ChatGPT, you'd need to go to the internet, you need to do chatgpt.com, well, here we are saying you can just simply pull a model like Llama, like Phi3, locally on your system. Even it could be a laptop or it could be a server in your bank, in your organization, and you can run against that local model. The next one is user-focused interface. They really wanted a very user-friendly interface that, so that anybody who even has some command level knowledge, because there's a good CLI, we will take a look into that, it just, again, works pretty much like Docker, right? It's a pretty nice CLI. You can just simply use commands, simple commands like Olama help, Olama pull, Olama run, right? So these are the simple commands and a very user-friendly interface. And the good thing about Olama is that you get the CLI and you also get a user interface, which is open web UI. We will take a look into that as well. Then uh, there is a good open source integration. Uh, it supports all the open source principles because it started as an open source project. It allows the users to build on the existing AI model. So what it means is you can pull a Llama model. You can train your Llama model. You, you can even create your new models. So it encourages community-driven development. So once you have built your uh, new models, you can always uh, update it. You can even push it to the Llama repository. If it's approved, then it's, it would be there. Right? And there is a continuous innovation happening. Uh, trust me, uh, just started 2023. We are already recording the um, course on in 2024. So it's constantly evolving. So you need to keep watching the space. You need to keep watching what's going on in the world of Alama because they're adding new features every day. They're expanding the model uh, offerings and improving the platform to meet the AI community needs because they understand there is a lot of demand for generative AI. That's why they are constantly innovating on this. So I guess with this, you've got a very good understanding of the history behind Olama. Thanks for watching.